Hey there guys, my name is Tristan. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video we're going to be going over what you need to go backpacking for the first time this fall. I know it's a popular season coming up, a lot of leaves changing and comfortable temperatures of bonfires and family memories to make and friend memories to make with friends. Um, so it's a very popular time to go backpacking and to get into what you need to go backpacking we're just going to dive right on in right now. The first thing you're going to need is a good pack to use. Now I use the REI Traverse Pack. This is a little bit older and it's a 70 liter backpack that effectively fits everything that I need in to survive for the days ahead of whatever day I'm setting out on. Now it can fit literally everything. One of these sleeping bags over here, my sleeping pad, some food, water, my dog's food, uh, my hatchet, my camera equipment for when I'm vlogging my trips. It fits absolutely everything. So having something with enough storage space. Now, some of you may need 70 liters of storage space or space in your pack. Some of you may not. So either you want is something more along the lines of a 40 or a 50 liter pack, or you want something as hefty and durable as this. Now, I'm not saying that those 40 and 50 liter packs are going to be any less durable because they're not going to be any less durable typically. But you can expect to spend anywhere from a used pack going for, let's say, $100 or something from Dick's Sporting Goods for $100. That's going to weigh a little bit more than what you would get at Recreational Incorp uh, Equipment Incorporated or REI, which is where I bought this pack. Now the second option, and the second thing I want to tell you guys about is how important a good sleep system is. I love sleep. I can sleep for 12 hours a day. As a matter of fact, I just did that last night. So let's get right into this. Starting off, let's go ahead and just jump with the base of your sleep system, quite literally the base. This is your self-inflating, or this is your sleeping pad. This goes beneath you and it serves as a form of insulation for you between the ground. As you can see, it lays out right here, just like so you blow it up or it self-inflates just to release the valve and it'll blow up itself over time. You'll need, it, you'll need to give a couple extra breaths to get it completely inflated, but it inflates just like this. And I'll let you guys see how well this works out. Just by laying it here for a minute, you guys can see as I talk about other types of sleeping pads, how this just kind of inflates itself over time. Now, there are other types of, of sleeping pads, such as a foam sleeping pad, uh, which is basically a foldable. I'll, I'll, I'll show a picture of it while I'm talking about it, but you just lay it out, it's easy to carry, you put it on the bottom of the top of your pack and you just go and hike with it. It's easy to use, you could even use it, you could even use it as a sitting pad by fo folding half of it out so you can just pop a squat and sit down and relax on it. Now as I told you about that option, you can see that there's quite a bit more air in this now. It's filling up just a bit, so at this point you just need to give it a few more extra breaths to be able to fill it up completely. Now next up, now this is the base, I, sh I should remind you. The next part is utterly the most important. Now whether you have that or not, you want a good sleeping bag. So over here, we've got a zero degree synthetic sleeping bag, but over here we have a 40 degree down sleeping bag. Now depending on the weather you're in, in the climate and the temperature you're working with, you either wanna have a zero degree synthetic or a down, doesn't matter. Down's a little bit more expensive or you want to have a 40 degree down or synthetic. Now I'll give you an example of a 40 degree synthetic. For backpacking purposes, I would not take this ever. Car camping, maybe, probably not because it just takes up way too much space in the trunk or in the back seat or whatever I'm working with. So this is literally a 40 degree synthetic sleeping bag. You can see how massive this is compared to the size of the bag for the 40 degree down. Look how much of a difference that is. You can, <laughs> I don't even think I need to talk anymore about this. So that can go away. Picking out your sleeping bag is important because if you're expecting to go camping when it's 50 degrees, you do not want to get a bag that's rated to zero because you're going to be utterly too warm. You're going to want to have both legs out in the sleeping bag beside you. So what I would recommend is talk to your local sporting goods store or talk to a representative specifically about the climate you're working in. Now it's a general rule of thumb. You want to have a sleeping bag that's going to cover all bases or at least the bases of which you know the lower limits or the low for that temperature in your climate will be for that night. So let's say you're going out camping tonight in the low tonight is 40. 
you're gonna be well within the safe area of a 40 degree down sleeping bag or a synthetic sleeping bag. Again, it depends on you and what you like. Now, if you're wanting to go camping and it's 20 or 10 or zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, you do not want to work with a 40 degree uh, sleeping bag. You wanna work with something like this zero degree synthetic or down sleeping bag because that's going to give you the most warmth that's going to protect you from the elements that's going to protect you from the cold that is outside that's going to keep you warm and ultimately alive we all want that now the next thing i want you to think about is cooking how are you going to prepare your meals what are you going to eat you have a couple different options you can choose from and we're going to hop right into that right now now when it comes to cooking or food or anything like that you want to have enough and a day's extra. So when it comes to cooking and food, you have a few different options. You can have things called MREs or meal ready to eat, uh, which is basically pouches of freeze dried or dried food that you pour boiling water into and it prepares a meal. Typically serves two, but I can honestly, and I have before, I've eaten one whole MRE uh, just for myself because I eat it quite a bit. I eat a, I eat a lot actually. So then you have other options such as being able to cook your food. Now you don't want to take your home pots and pans, your calphalon, anything like that because one, that's expensive to take with you. You may get it burned, you may drop it or break it or lose it or get it stolen, however. Um, you want to take stuff that's fairly inexpensive and fairly light. So what I have here is I actually went to Goodwill one day. You even see the Goodwill sticker on there. And I bought this. Now this was only $5. And this is a very good skillet. It's very light. And I'll cook chicken, I'll cook bacon, I'll cook eggs in this. Typically, um, and I've also got this. So if you're boiling anything, I've actually used this my last camping trip. It's permanently on there now. There's a little food in there. Um, some macaroni and cheese. But if you've got an MRE and you want to boil water with it, you can pour the MRE into this, boil water, because that's how you get it to cook thoroughly. Or rehydrate I should say. Now having something like this or like this is really important because if you're carrying a ton of water with you it's going to be heavy. Heavy Water is the heaviest substance you can possibly take per volume um, or per container of water that you're carrying. So to be able to minimize the amount of water you're taking you're going to need something to carry water back to your campsite to boil or to pour something from one bottle into this into another bottle to boil is going to be utterly important because if you drink water while out camping that may not be treated or definitely is not treated, you can get Giardia, which look that up, it's terrible. Um, you can get E. coli, you can get all different kinds of things from the water that you're drinking if it's not properly boiled or filtered. Now if you even want to really cut down on this, you can get a water filtration kit and that's about $200 at REI and I don't have one yet, I will plan on getting one. But if you really want to cut down on the amount of pots and pans you have to carry throughout the day, um, get one of those portable water bags that filter out the water via gravity and have that feed into a water bottle. Now the next thing I want to talk about with you guys for what you need to have to go backpacking for the first time this fall is a good shelter. Now whether you want to use a tent or a tarp like this is up to you. I prefer a tent. I don't own one, but I've used one in the past and I prefer a tent because the one, they're easier and faster to set up. They give you a little more security. My dog can get up and walk around a little bit. And with the tarp, honestly, I don't like working with a tarp that much, but I have, I should say that this is the only tarp I've officially backpacked with. And yes, it, it's pretty simple to set up. However, with this, I have to use a mosquito net. And one thing I hate the most about going backpacking camping is dealing with the bugs. So this is something I will always take with me, or not always, but if I do take with me, I'll be taking a mosquito net, which is right here. And now this is a Outback Double six point suspension mosquito net. This sets up in a pretty easy manner. You string some paracord through each side and then it opens right up. And I didn't use it the way it was supposed to be used last time I went camping, I did a single draw. Uh, one piece of paracord going through every opening and that ended up being all over my face and my dog couldn't move around as much it was real narrow and a little uncomfortable to sleep under however i worked with it and it's what I, it worked out just fine for me now the next thing you need to have when you go camping is a good attitude because when you go camping 
And I should say that these are the three most important things I find to take with you when you go camping, other than rain protection. So something like something like this, so just normal rain jacket. Um, this is from Carhartt, size medium. Um, this works well, very, very well, I should say. Protects you from the wind and the rain, and coming up in the fall, it will be some much chillier rain than what we are used to here in the summer in the Midwest. So like I said before, the best thing for you to have is a good attitude. Reason being, because you're out camping. If you get lost, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you maintain a cool, collected mind, because when you start rushing and having anxiety about where you're at, you start freaking out. I've done it before. You need to maintain a cool and collected mind and remember where you're at and be aware of your surroundings because you could start running and run right over a cliff. Now that's a very drastic uh, situation from what you may actually do, but you may end up running in a different direction from where you parked, from where you stayed, and you just got to either breeze in the trees or take a cool deep breath and remember where you stepped. But other than that for now guys, we are done with this video. I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you do, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic Wednesday.